Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Gospel Life. Happy New Year. I invite you to stand as we sing together. I'm going to need your help this morning. Can you sing it out with me? All right, here we go. I saw Satan fall high lightning. I saw darkness run for cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. I believe in signs and wonder. I have resurrection power. Still the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. My praise belongs to you forever. All right, we sing it out. This is my testimony from death to life. Because grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Come on, put those hands together. Together, sons and daughters, bought with blood and washed in water. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father. Our God will finish what He started. Yes, our God will finish what He started. Grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. If I'm not Dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, you're not done. Come on. Greater things. testimony from death to life cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony now I'm alive this is my testimony from death to life cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus
seats I want to have you turn to somebody next to you and say good morning happy new year so glad that you made it this morning All right. I love this part. <laughs> As you can see, it takes me a minute to get up here. So good morning, you guys. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. OK, I'm going to try it again because I didn't. I only heard a couple people. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Yeah, much better. Hey, guys. I uh, just want to say good morning. I want to introduce myself. My name is Renee. If you haven't met me, I uh, man, it seems like Christmas came so fast, right? And then like now here we are the last Sunday of the entire year. Whew. So my uh, manager and I went out, so she has been on medical leave because she had surgery on her back. So her and I met out for, for uh, a lunch. And we were talking about the new year, and she's like, I can't wait to get this new year over with. Or this old, sorry, not new year. Woo, old year <laughs> over with to get into the new year. And I was like, yeah. And so she started talking about kind of what she was thinking about for you next year. And it was really cool because she was like, you know, Renee, I want to be able to, you know, keep a little lid on my uh, temper. She's like, I can get kind of frustrated pretty quickly. And so she's like, can you help me with that? If you see me doing that, can you help me with that? And I thought, well, that's pretty impressive for someone to be as open and as honest as she was about kind of what she was, you know, looking forward to in the new year. And so just made me start thinking about, man, what is it that I need to be thinking about, you know, for the new year in terms of my faith and, and my walk and what is it that God wants me to do this year? And so, um, you know, if you're at that point and you're like, hey, look, you know, there was something this past year that was fantastic that I want to take into the new year, you know, do that. What's that one thing? And if there's something that you're like, this whole entire year stunk, Okay, guess what? His mercies are new every morning. And so guess what? You get to start a whole new year. If the, so, you know, just thinking about 
and I guess if you're like in that point where you're like feeling bad and you're like, things just didn't go the way I thought they were going to go, just think about the fact that the Lord knows that and he loves you, right? And he has a plan. He, he always has a plan, even if the plan doesn't look the way that you think it should. I'm always one of those people that I want to look behind the curtain and the Lord is like, no, you don't need to do that. You need to just take one step at a day. So I just want to encourage you, get through this last day <laughs> and take one step into next year um, and just see what the Lord does. So, uh, so if you're brand new, uh, we want to encourage you to step outside. I think is the take five in the back in the regular spot now. Oh, it's in the corner. It's all over the place. So sometimes I'm like, where is it? But uh, if you're brand new, stop by Take 5. And if, you're, if you see me, you're in the right spot because I'm going to be at Take 5 today. So you can talk with us and we can, you know, you can share and figure out what you want to do next year and get good information about what's happening here. And so um, also we just want to encourage you, sign up for a small group. If you're not in a small group, there are so many uh, opportunities between our church and the other church. There are so many opportunities. Get in a small group. It's been the best thing ever. And I, I wish I could, you know what, I'm going to do something off Pastor Tay, so work with me. Um, Peggy, can you come here? Peggy's, I know she's like, what? No, it's not. So just, <laughs> okay. So Peggy's in my small group and has joined our small group and has been with us for a while. Peggy, can you tell me what's, what is, what is so great about being a small, what has been really impressionable and just really, why are you in a small group? A uh, couple reasons. One, to learn more about God and uh, further my faith and community. I have found the best bunch of women that are so supportive and um, yeah, I'm so happy. I was in another small group uh, with a different church and this is a totally different experience, but wonderful. And I would encourage anybody who's not in a small group to get in one because it's really uh, faith affirming. You heard it, folks, right from someone in small group. Thank you, Peg. Thank you, Peggy. Thank you for being really, oh, I love you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, get yourself involved in a small group. I love my small group. They never know what I'm going to do. So if you guys are like, we're not joining her group for sure. <laughs> Come on. It'll be fun. Uh, and then, of course, we want to just thank you so much for your giving and your offering and all the things that you've done. I mean, this year has been amazing to watch what the Lord has done. I'm just going to, and I know I said this a million times, we got two services. I mean, it's great. And right now we're a little shaky because it's the holiday. But you know what? It's been packed. And it's been amazing. And it's not just, every time I come, I meet somebody new. There's always somebody new here. So, like, God is really moving. So thank you. Thank you for your gifts, your money, your time, your heart, everything. We appreciate it, you guys. We really, really do. And so looking forward to next year and what God's going to continue to do, um, you know, with our church. So if you could bow your heads and pray with me, that would be great. Dear Lord, I just thank you so much. Um, Father, I just uh, pray just over, you know, everybody here, Father God, and no matter what spot they're in, Father, that you would meet them in that spot. God, that you would encourage their heart. Father, if they've had a great year or a bad year, Father, that they would know that you are in their corner. And God, so I just thank you so much for all that this... Uh, congregation has done for the community and for the church and help building and growing and calling people to Christ. It's been amazing. And so, God, I pray that um, you would just uh, bless Pastor Daniel as he comes up and preaches uh, today, Father God, and that you, you through him, would just speak to everyone here. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, thanks, Renee. Uh, my name is Kayla. If I haven't met you, I'm so glad that you have chosen to join us this morning. Um, and I just wanted to share similarly, as I look back over the last year um, and all the things that have happened, all that God has done, you know, I'm a bit of a worrier myself. Uh, I tend to get anxious or worried, concerned about things. And um, there's a passage of scripture in Psalm 46, verse 10. I've got it here on my arm, actually, that says, be still and know that I am God, I will be exalted among the nations, and I will be exalted in the earth. Um, and as I think about the coming year and wherever you might be this morning, wherever you might be at, whatever resolutions you might have, um, that maybe that is something that we as a church can call ourselves to, that Christ might be exalted in this place. 
Um, he desires that he would calm our fears, that we only need to be still before him, and that he would be exalted, that he would be magnified in us. And so as we sing this next song, I just wanted to lay that as our expectation, lay that in front of our hearts while we sing this, that we would sing, oh, Christ be magnified in me. Um, and whatever, again, whatever resolution you might have this morning, maybe this is something that we can use to inform uh, what God is calling us to this year. So let's proclaim this out together in, in the, the strength of our hearts and in the courage of our hearts. If we don't quite have the faith this morning to proclaim that, uh, may we just sing it anyway and believe that God hears us and he knows our hearts. So let's stand as we sing this together. it all on him. We lift him up in our lives. Set him as the Lord. Sing this out.
Let's pray together. Lord, how majestic, how marvelous is your name in all the earth. Lord, that song is just a powerful, powerful reminder and cry and statement and wish and desire that in all of life, may you be exalted above all. May we adopt the words of of Paul, all that we are is in Christ, and uh, to live for you is our heart's desire. Lord, thank you for what our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard, our hearts have felt in 2023. Uh, Thank you for the great plan you have for us as we enter into 2024. And I pray, oh God, there are moments of our lives, of our characters, of our walk that are chiseled off, that are unshackled, that we may live anew, that we may walk in the fullness and the newness of what life is in Jesus Christ. Then, God, I pray that you use us as bold witnesses and testimonies for others to see, hear, and know you. I thank you for every person in this room. Thank you for our church. Thank you for our community. And I pray, oh God, that your will will be done in all of our lives. And this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, children, if you're in the room, a nursery is open zero to three years old today. The other kids, you stay up here. There's some pages out there for you to uh, interact w- with during the time here. And happy early New Year. Let me express that to you all. And I am grateful. Uh, I couldn't even think of a word there. I am just grateful uh, for you all, for your love, your care, your prayers, and your commitment to Jesus uh, being here in this congregation. So uh, I get a chance. There's one other person, too. Kayla Davenport. Can we celebrate Kayla and our team, Andrew and um, uh, Sam? (laughs) I'm blanking today. Good thing I'm not preaching because I got no words to say. (laughs) That's a first. (laughs) I'm grateful for y'all. Every week, Kayla has led us, has pastured us in the sense of of worship and leading our team. And so uh, I'm super grateful uh, for them. So today, our youth pastor, Daniel Kim, is coming to share the word. Many of you know Daniel, uh, some new faces in the room. Daniel, why don't you come on up and join? Uh, Daniel serves as our student pastor uh, here at Gospel Life Church. Man, you are loved. I know. And uh, man, I appreciate your heart, your growth. Uh, big steps since your time, since you came to, to college here and and joint staff, and your process of 2023, of which you probably may share in your sermon of, of, of how things got denied, and you stuck, and you stayed, and the Lord provided. And then for you to uh, get engaged yeah. uh, this year. This right. guy, yeah, set to be married June? Uh, June 7th. June 7th, right. man. So we are cheering you on. We are Thank grateful. You. We want to keep giving you opportunities to uh, grow your gift. Our student ministry is doing fantastic you got some fans in the house back there, you know, uh, but they're doing great because of what the Lord is doing. Stay here, awake. So. Okay. <laughs> so, Daniel, yeah. take it away. All right. Thank you, Pastor Tay. Appreciate it. How's everyone doing this morning? Yeah, really good. Uh, just as Pastor Tay said, my name is Daniel. I serve here as one of the pastors at this church, and it's a joy to be able to in the Lord's house this morning. Uh, last week, I was actually here as well for Christmas, and I know, Pastor Tate, you're not going to talk about it because someone else has to talk about it. They ran out of chairs. Isn't it crazy? Like, man, that's right. Yeah, give it up for that. I love that. It's, it was so such an emotional moment to see the growth of this place, and I think growth happens under an amazing, killer, charismatic, God-fearing. Come on, list it, man. Come help me out here. Leader right here, right? I love it. Love it. But not only that, I think sometimes you often forget, we, uh, we forget that this can happen because of you. Uh, I think going to two services is very inconvenient to many of us. And I think a couple weeks ago, I was in North Wheaton, and Pastor Austin was, I think he was doing an announcement, and he was saying, at Gospel Life, we, we choose inconvenience to make more impact to other people. And I think that is what's happening this campus as well. Some of you come earlier in the morning to make coffee. Some of you volunteer kids ministry with this SOS moment and do it twice, right, with hospitality serving twice, like, I understand sometimes it feels like no one looks at it, uh, but at least I do. And Pastor Tay, I know you do too. And we just want to say you uh, just made this happen. Uh, So at this time, I just want to take to appreciate all of you guys. Thank you for each one of you. 
Uh, as I was thinking about what, what, what message I should preach on the last day of 2023, uh, I, I just realized that there's just something that I just really wanted to share with uh, all of you. Uh, as most of you guys know, I serve as a student pastor, and my main job is to interact with my uh, middle school and high school students. Uh, and I, I, I personally prefer middle school because there are two middle schools sitting there on uh, this campus. Um, <laughs> But, but it's hard because I'm 26, right? And when you're 26, you're kind of like, I have to go like 10 to 13 years ago. And I, and I try my best, and sometimes it works with my brief memory uh, when I was in middle school or high school. Uh, but at times, it's just really hard to get more depth out of my experience so that I can resonate more with my students. And there was one time I was, I was kind of bored, and I uh, was looking at my Gmail. And I don't know about you, but uh, when I was a kid, I made like tons of Gmail accounts. And I was just like looking at my old email, and I found my middle school, high school email. And I was like, oh, right, like bkim16, uh, caj.jp, because it was in Japan. We still use Gmail in Japan. Um, surprise. Uh, and then I looked into the email, and, you know, it's just like, I don't know if you've ever read your old student days email. It's just like, you're like so cringy, right? Like, <laughs> you know, like, why did I send that to him? You know, all these things like that. Um, and I, I went to my email, and I looked in my left corner in my email section, and there was a section that, had, uh, that was named that says MOM, like M-O-M in all caps. And quite obviously, just as probably many of you would do, I was, I was like, man, I, I need to see what this folder is about. So I decided to go uh, press that uh, folder, and I came across with like hundreds of emails uh, that was sent from my mom without a single reply, right? And I, and I, I know, I know, yeah, yeah you, can, you can judge me after the service. We're, <laughs> we're in the Lord's house, amen? Um, and then I, <laughs> I was there, and I... Looked at my emails, and you know, most of them are like, son, don't forget to bring the lunchbox. It's your fourth one that you forgot. Um, yeah, don't forget that you have this assignment due next week. You know, it was all these like, you know, needy greedy, like mom emails that they would send to their kids. And I think it was just so funny that my mom emailed me this because I'm pretty sure she would have texted me, but I, you, you probably could also guess that I never probably replied, right? So she probably did this like double notification thing. And as I was keep reading this email, at first it was kind of funny, right? Like seeing, man, like, I cannot believe I never replied to these emails. That was my first initial thought. And my second thought was as I was reading these emails that was sent to me like 15, like 15 years ago, some of these words were extremely wise. It was like bag of wisdom. It was a mix of Bible verses. It was a mix of words of encouragement. It was a mix of just some simple words yet so profound that I probably never really read when I was back in 12 or 15. And I'm sitting down in Carroll Stream, Illinois, right? I'm sitting down in Carroll Stream, and I'm reading an email that was sent from a Korean that was sent in Japan from a different country that still has a tremendous impact on my life to these days. Now you can guess what I'm going to be preaching about on the last day of 2023. I want to speak about a very, very important book called the Bible. This Bible was also written thousands of years ago, the most well-preserved letter from the ancient Israel that still brought us all together sitting down here in this place. Amen? Amen. And as we see the Bible, I'm going to be talking about quite a bit of Bible. I'm going to try to compact it in the easiest way as possible. But the three main things that I want to talk about with the Word of God is the fact that the Word of God is binding, it is perfect, and lastly, it is necessary. The Word of God, the Bible that we read here on a daily basis, it is binding. It binds all over our heart. It is perfect with its accuracy. And lastly, it is necessary in our daily lives. You might be asking, well, Daniel, what do you mean by the Word of God binding in our heart? When I mean by binding, I'm talking about the ultimate authority of the Scripture. You don't just read the Bible, but it just, the Word of God is not just something that sticks in your brain and your knowledge, but it just binds all over our heart because God Himself lives in the Scripture. And as we see this, first, the first thing that you and I must remember is as Christians, you and I, we exist, we live in, in, in the midst of any occupation or any situation. We live simply uh, to please God, 
in any, anything that we do. As, as Christians, you and I live, we are, we are born, we are created, and the purpose of our life is to please God. And in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1 through 2, I'm going to be looking at many verses here today. It's, a, it's an amazing letter by Paul, and he says, Finally, then, brothers, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God, just as you're doing, that you do so more and more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. So we just initially talked about Bible being, uh, you know, we initially talked about our life, um, the purpose of our life having to please God. But many of you guys, including myself, we sit down and we ponder a question, okay, I agree that we live to please God, but how? And Paul is so clear here, he's saying, hey, you are created to please God, and for you to live like Christ-like followers, you and I must go to the scripture, because the word of God is a manual of our life guidance. And the thing is, this is a truth, it's a hard truth that some of us may just struggle with accepting this, but if some of you are still not living in accordance, if some of you are living in opposition to the scripture, I am so sorry to break your heart, but you are not walking with the Lord. And it is hard. And following the life guidance, I, I don't know about you, but uh, do you guys like Ikea? My fiance does, and she's not here, so I'm going to say this. You know, and it's also not recorded. <laughs> like, it's, 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 it's a painful 50, mo- 50 minutes of my life, right? <laughs> and, like, she buys something, okay? And, like, I, I, like it, she kind of hands it up to me, like, hey, can you make this? <laughs> I'm like, oh, boy, I'm not from Sweden, man. I can't do this. <laughs> And I, it was like $30 chair, it was like super easy to make, and I'm like looking at like YouTube videos, like, you know, all these things like that, and like, it just never worked out. Like, and, 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 and I've tried, I've tried so hard. And like, she looks at me, and she's like, just look at the, gu- just, just look at the manual. It's written in there. And I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah. It took me 26 years to realize it was dumb, you know? But I think this happens in our life as well. We try so hard. We are just like putting all our emotion, all our effort into it. But sometimes we forget that the manual of guidance is right next to us. We still want to hear from the word of encouragement by the people and not from the word of God. When the Bible is so clear saying, hey, you stick with this word of God because this is a bag of wisdom that is going to guide you to where you really need to be because the truth is written here in the scripture. But the reality is that life is so tough. I, I love when, Renee, you were, you were doing announcements, I, it was just like, I, I, I like went through the moments of 2023, like there were so many things that were good, but some of you, including myself, 2023 was pretty tough too, wasn't it? And I think it is a reality that even Paul writes it in the scripture saying we live in a spiritual warfare. Like Satan just wants us to give up, Satan just wants us to just stop from where we're going and to keep tempt us to make us ask a question like, what am I even doing here? Because you and I live in a season where we are just continuously attacked with the temptation given by the world. But now you're going to be talking about, okay, well, in the midst of temptation, I get it. You go to the Word of God, but how do we fight against the temptation? When I think about that, I cannot hesitate but to go to the book of Matthew chapter 4 when we see Jesus himself going against the temptation. We see Jesus 40 days of fasting. I don't know about you, but if I don't eat more than six hours, I get hangry. Uh, not, not hungry, hangry. Do you guys know what that is? It's hungry plus angry, right? And Jesus was probably the same way as well, and Satan first attacks him. I, I think most of you who know this scripture, we see Satan saying, if you're the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. But the thing is, when Jesus fights again with this statement that is thrown by Satan, Jesus doesn't just use his emotion. Jesus doesn't use his knowledge. What Jesus uses is a simple, literal word of God that's written in Deuteronomy 8.3, saying, Men shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And the second temptation happens from Satan saying, Hey, if you're the son of God, go throw yourself, and angel's going to save you. And the second time, he also uses the literal word of God. It's like a control C, control V, right? Deuteronomy 6.16, he says, do not put your God in your test. 
And lastly, Satan attacks Jesus, saying, hey, all this I will give you. He said, if you will bow down and worship me. And Jesus responds once again with the literal word of God, saying, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. If you are attacked with temptation, even right now sitting in this place where we are going to have temptation tomorrow, I wish there was no temptation tomorrow, but the truth and reality is that there is going to be temptation, even in the new year. But one thing that I want all of us to remember as we are pondering with this phrase of new year, new me, we are going to, we are going to proclaim saying, man, in the midst of temptation, in the midst of struggles and anxiety that's residing in my heart, I'm going to fight against this temptation with the literal word of God. Because the word of God has the ultimate authority to fight against the temptation because Jesus himself showed in the book of Matthew chapter 4. But the funny thing is that Jesus, when, when Satan attacks to Jesus, right, Jesus doesn't go like, hey, hold on, let me get my holy Bible app. And he doesn't look up like how to fight against this temptation. He was meditating on this on day and night, so he knows the literal word of God that goes against with the, all kinds of temptation that would help him to stay strong, that would help him. It doesn't even take him more than five seconds to respond to this statement because he himself was living on this scripture. But the reality is that most of us, instead of relying with the word of God, we turn to our attention to the worldly materials that sometimes when emotions, when the reality, when the words from others really take, uh, that, that just bothers us in our way. And maybe next question that you might ask me is, hey, how can you be so certain that the word of God is binding in our life with the ultimate authority? Like, how can this be so ultimate? Like, how can it be so authoritative with this word of God? And that goes, to my next, uh, that, uh, that goes to my next point by saying the word of God is perfect. Because the word of God is so accurate. It is so perfect and accurate, which gives me and you and I, which gives us the reason to believe that it has the ultimate authority in our life. This actually text is uh, one of my anchor texts. It's Psalm chapter 19. Psalm chapter 19, verse 7. David confesses, saying, The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. Because the author of the scripture is a perfect God, we can simply believe that the word of God is perfect and has the ultimate authority to take all over our life. Because God himself lives in the scripture, we can just truly believe that the word of God is so perfect and it's so accurate that it gives us the reason to believe and to trust that God is with us. And I also love this text. I, it's in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 through 17. I really like this a lot. It says, Scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. As most of you know, we, we, we are imperfect. Like more and more I realize that as older I get in my mid-20s, I'm realizing how much of a broken human being I am. But the thing is, it, it is God, is the word of God that makes imperfect human being like us to perfect with the gospel that is written in the scripture because Jesus himself came to this world, died for our sin because he simply loved us so much. And another trait that I want you guys to remember, and I love to use this analogy any soccer fans here? Wow, there's like two people. Man, no one's going to get this. <laughs> well, I'm going to still give it a try. Um, um, wow, that caught me off guard. Um, <laughs> so in any sports, let's, you know, forget soccer. In any sports, <laughs> there's this thing called transfer season. Right? When one player goes to a different team. And like it's such a big deal. As a sports fan, like you like are so excited, like, oh, like what? LeBron James into a different team. I'm using basketball now because you know I forgot that I'm in America. Um, <laughs> but that news is like so interesting, right? And because I'm a sports fan, like I, I look at like what social media, Instagram posts or like what, what, what's uh, what, like what, Sports Center or something like that, and you wait for this transfer news to happen because there's so many rumors, and there's just so many reporters who try to like you know write up article, hey this transfer happened or something happened, they try to write it, but the thing is like there's not many reporters that has my ultimate trust uh, to to know that this transfer is actually going to happen 
because I've seen so many previous, <laughs> so many previous transfer news that was, that was leaked in the article that was not true. So that probably, like, I lost a lot of trust in that, but there's just one reporter that I know that every single rumor, every single transfer that happens, he was right the whole time. Like, even from 2017 when I was in high school, even to right now, 2023, 2024, his article about transfer news has been so accurate over the years that bought my full trust to remember that it is just so perfect and it is so accurate because of the trust that he has shown me uh, with, his, with, 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 the, with the job uh, that he's supposed to do. And I think it's the same for the Scripture, I think it's the same for the scripture. When you go to the Old Testament, when you go to the New Testament, when the human beings failed, when the Israelites took, took 40 years to go to the land, God has still been so faithful. And even if people ask for the kings and they still worship the idols, God still loved us. He still sends us. And ultimately in the New Testament, we see, Jesus, we see God finally sending one and only son because he simply loved us so much. And sometimes we often forget that this story that you and I read from, what, like a VBS from youth group or whenever, we forget that this is enough reason for us to believe that God has been so good to us at all times, which gives me to remember that the Word of God is so perfect and accurate. It's a time that you and I must remember the perfect nature of God is given to us through the Scripture. And this is why you and I can rejoice and remain hopeful with the Word of God, that God living in this place, so that we can completely rely on to this perfect nature of God written in this Scripture. And lastly, we remember the Word of God is necessary. We talked about the ultimate authority. We talked about, uh, we, we talked about the accurate Word of God. But lastly, what's most important that I want us to remember as we just go through this new year and our new self, we must remember that the Word of God is necessary. I changed this this week because I used to write the Word of God is useful, but I realized I couldn't really say that because it's not just useful. It's not just highly recommended. It's not just like, hey, you go to this when you're like struggling and maybe that's it. No, no, no. It is necessary, right? And you might be thinking, well, why is it so necessary? Because I can give you a really simple equation because without the gospel, there is no salvation, Without the, without the gospel, there's no salvation. You can try to debate me all you want, but I'm going to still fight, fight for it because without the gospel, there's no salvation. But the gospel is also written in the scripture, which gives us a simple equation once again saying if there's no Bible, if there's no word of God, there is no gospel. So now you might be thinking, hey, why do we need the scripture? Specifically, like, what are the circumstances that you and I need to remember? Like, why do we need to live in the word of God? Number one is for us to maintain our spiritual life. We need the scripture. The word of God is necessary for us to maintain our spiritual life. Uh, I uh, come from a foreign country, as most of you know, Japan. And after 20, I came here 2016, and it was 2022, no, 2023, sorry, it was this year, that I got my first ever dental insurance. Like, we, I didn't know that, like, you needed, like, 5,000 insurance in America. Like, you know, in, in, in Japan, just go, and they're like, they take care of it, you know? Um, and I was like, I looked at my dental insurance. I remember telling Pastor T, I was like, oh, man, like, so how does this work, right? And he recommended uh, cleaning, like, they clean twice a year or something like that, right? I was like, yeah, great. So I did this, like, go to online, like, look up a dentist and all these things like that. And I finally scheduled my first ever dental cleaning in seven years in America. And I know you guys are like disgusted by me, but you know, bear with me. Um, I'm still in my 20s. Uh. <laughs> Things are gonna change after I get married. I promise you. Um, <laughs> and I and I and I go to cleaning, right? And like you know, it's like such a cool experience. It was like going to field trip or something like that. You know, I was like. <laughs> Man, and I'm like lying down, I'm like ready, like, it's like open your mouth and all these things like that. And it, it, was, it went fine. And then like a couple minutes later, I hear like, <sighs> and I'm like, what's wrong, doc? You know, what's, what's, what's going on? He goes like, son, do you brush your teeth? <laughs> I was like, I drink a lot of coffee, but yes, I do. And he's like, okay, son, do you floss, Fl floss, right? 
and I was my foreigner moment, and I looked at him, and I said, what is that? <laughs> and my dentist was so furious. He's like, this is why, like, bro, like, he just, like, kept, like, yelling at me, and I'm like, oh, man, you know, it's like, <laughs> like, he just, like, said, yeah, be, be, be. he's like, because you didn't floss, because you didn't brush your teeth, you now need uh, two crowns. I forgot. What's another one? Filling. filling, yes, like multiple fillings, right? And I almost asked him, like, what is that again? But I decided to Google <laughs> later, you know, all these things like that. And now I had to spend hundreds of dollars on this new crowns and a filling that I have to get in dentists in this country. But the thing is, if I maintain my dental health, if I was wise enough or married earlier to have a, um, <laughs> tell me to take care of my dental health, I would have been able to avoid all those crises. And I think it's the same for the spiritual life as well. When my mother used to teach me as a child, he's saying, he's saying, son, don't forget, the Word of God, consider this as bread and consider prayer as water. Like, we need to make sure we eat healthy. We need to make sure we eat on a regular basis. But sometimes we, sometimes we totally forget, man, maybe not reading the Word of God for three days is not going to have any impact because I live a busy life. Isn't it? Like, I still have to pick up my kids. I still have to, like, drop off my kids. I have to still go to work. And, like, life is so busy and busy and busy that sometimes prohibits us from knowing the, 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 the value of the Scripture when this is the bread and the prayer of, uh, and the life of prayer is water that we need this to live. Secondly, we need the scripture. The word of God is so necessary. Secondly, to discern God's calling. In my mid-20s, the funny part is like, you know, when you talk to college people, everyone's kind of like excited for their career, right? They're like, yeah, I'm excited to do this, like med school, like law school, why, 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 you know, all these things like that. But in my mid-20s, as I uh, see my friends uh, living in Chicago area or anywhere, even with the phone calls in Japan, uh, a lot of my friends... They, a lot of them went to college, a lot of them had a job, have a job, right? Like they are all in the, you know, the, the stages that they need to be, um, which they thought they did. But I had three people tell me last month in my age, in the 25, 26, 27, telling me that they're lost. They're like, man, I paid all my student loans, I, I got the job, like, you know, I'm, I'm dating a girl, or whatever, but like he said, I, I, I don't know, I just feel lost. I feel like I'm not at the place I need to be. And although my examples in the mid 20s, there are so many people in any age areas, even high school, middle school, some of us just really are living in a season where we need to discern the Lord's calling. And the thing is, what you and I must, the, the thing that you and I do at times is instead of just going back to the scripture, going back to the word of God that tells us where we need to be, we rely on ourselves, just, just, just banking on this like outside resources, just hearing from the rumors, oh, like, yeah, this person told me this, this YouTube video, this TikTok, this book, when the real book that you and I have to be relying on is the word of God. I man, I wish I brought the Bible. I have my iPad. It's 2024, but I have the Bible here, okay? <laughs> that you and I need to be living in the word of God. God for us to endure through the crisis, for us to go through this, this, uh, this tough season of life because it's the Word of God that has the ultimate authority to help us and give us the answer in any circumstances. And the Lord calls us, the, the, the Lord tells us, and I still remember this happened to me recently. Uh, this is a longer story that I want to share later in the, in, the, in, in the sermon, but I lived in the midst of ambiguity for around six to seven years with, with my immigration right? And I didn't have immigration. My fiance also did immigration, and it was just a crisis, and I also had to be drafted in the South Korean army. Like, it was, it was a lot. Like, in the back, there were so many things going in my brain, and I'm like, man, Lord, I don't, I don't know what to do. And I still remember I was at a North Wing campus, and I sat down in a service at 1045, and Pastor Scott, he was preaching, and I remember him using a reference from Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, uh, first seek the kingdom of God and everything shall be added unto you. And that just transformed my prayer, because I pray for my will. I pray for my need. And I realize, that, man, when I fix my eyes on the kingdom of God, when I decide, when I choose to trust that he's going to provide every single thing, when I fix my eyes on him, when I fix for his kingdom, for his calling, when I act in obedience, he's going to give me everything. And to make the long story short, I got my visa, I got my job that I needed, and with the miracle, the South Korean government called me saying, I'm exempt from the duty in seven days. 
And this happened in 2023 May. You can clap, by the way. Like, it's a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> this is a little testimony, and I'm sure most of you have different testimonies as well. But we, when we go back to the scripture that tells us the wisdom to fix our eyes on Jesus, the word of God is necessary for us to discern God's calling. And lastly, we need the word of God to calm the storms of our life. There's so many storms that hit us in 2023. I, I want to share my storm, but looking in this room, there are people who went through worse storms than, than, than I have. And, and it is tough. 2023 was great. I think student ministry, Carrollston campus, it was the biggest win we've ever had in church history. But at the same time, storms hit us. And I remember, and you know, mine's not as extreme as some of you guys sitting in this room. But I remember one, one day I was praying. I was like, Lord, can you just give me one day, just one day, 24 hours, where I don't have to worry about anything? And everyone told me that's not going to happen, apparently. So... <laughs> It's not looking good, man. Um, and I go back to the word of God in John, chapter 14, 27, where God tells us, peace, I leave with you. It's not, ask, I'll give you peace. He says, peace, I leave with you. I left it with you. And so many of the times, we have the gift card, and we just like tell the world about this gift card, but we just forget to claim it, don't we? And it is hard. It is so hard to claim it because it is fate. <laughs> Claiming the peace is an act of faith. It's an act of obedience. And what God wants us to remember is that it is the word of God that tells us the answer to calm the storm. When Jesus, If Jesus is sleeping on a boat or it's shaking in the middle of the storm, I would rather trust him than any other person in this world. Amen. Friends, let's go back to the scripture that is necessary because it, it, it calms the storm of our life. As I close this time and as I invite the worship team up, I was talking to Pastor Tay about this sermon, and he gave me a really good quote to share. It's from a famous theologian, Charles Spurgeon, where he says, visit many of the books, but live in the Bible. It says, visit many of the books, but live in the Bible. And it is just so accurate because uh, even in the season of just, just, just hardships, I had many books that I read, and I watched this motivation of five-minute videos and all these whatever. It works, but it's temporary. It, it, it was just so temporary. But it is the word of God that has an everlasting impact in our life. It is a word of God that transforms lives. It is a word of God that, that got me to transfer to Moody Bible Institute and stay here and preach here in this country. It is a word of God that brought us all here together because it is a word of God that we need to rely on for our life to change, for our life to be better in the year of 2024. So I just have one action step. I'm not going to go through like five applications. I just have one application. Tomorrow, it's not even tomorrow, it's like in how many hours? Like almost 12 hours, right? In almost 12 hours, it's a new year, right? And I love it. Every year, it's a new year, new me. And I want us to remember this one verse, it's Joshua 1.8. It's a commandment that's written in Old Testament. It says, this book of law, the word of God, shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. It is undoubtable that 2023 in this generation is living in such a success-driven world. We, we, we need to be successful in order for us to live. When the, when the equation to success is so clear on the scripture where he says meditate on this word of God day and night. I, I, in this new year, 2024, it, it's a big season for me. I'm getting married. I'm starting my new doctor program. Like It's going to be a lot. We have, we're taking students to mission trips. We also have a summer camp. Like, the shoulders getting heavier and heavier with more responsibilities. I need this scripture. So I want to invite you to join me. I want you to invite you to join me that you just don't, don't just do this like a typical every year Bible reading. Like, not just that, but I want you to seriously remember that you need the word of God. This 2024 year is going to be better for you. It's going to be the best year when you and I are just so fixed on, we're just, we're just so soaked in this word of God. And when we absorb this scripture, you and I are going to see some transformative lives in this community in 2024. Lastly, as I close this time, I want to show you a little picture real quick. Hopefully it's up. It is. Okay. Uh, do you guys remember Kyle Carter? He preached here once, I think, right at Jensen? You know, he's like really bulky, like football, um, football college student. I met a lot of college students in my life. 
And if I can pick like my top three godly college student, I'll probably still pick Kyle Carter, right? This guy, this guy just loved Jesus, you know? And like, I'm like, man, like, it's just so crazy. You don't really think about other stuff. You just love the Lord, which is crazy, which is awesome. And the thing is, if you see this text here, you see Kyle texting me, read, read, it's, look at that, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, yesterday, today, like every single day he texts me this one word saying read, right? I just feel so bad because I never reply. Um, <laughs> yeah. But when he, call, he calls me like, what, once a year or twice a year, and he calls me, he goes like, usually when someone calls you, they go like, hey, how are you? right? Like, how's life? Like, that's like a normal question that people ask. But when this guy calls, he's always asking, hey, how are you doing with the Word of God? And I can just neglect that question, but it just means so much to me that even working at a church, even being a pastor, sometimes I forget I use the sermon prep time as a devotion. I, I sometimes just think like I know more than anyone else. Like, it's a temptation that I fight against. But the, the, my, my godly friend who reminds me that if I, myself, don't live in the Word of God, there's no student ministry. There's, there's no healthy ministry because I, myself, including myself, Pastor Tay, all of us, we need to live in the Word of God for us to go through our life, for us to remain as a godly, God-fearing leader in a church as well. Friends, maybe some of you are sitting down and you think, Daniel, I already do this well. Like, I have my verse of the day, you know. I, I, I'm on top of it. I want to give you another challenge for you. I want, to find, I want you to find that one friend or family who you're trying to reach to, who you've been praying for 20 years, who you've been praying and who you've been thinking of. I want you to do the same thing as Kyle. Maybe it doesn't have to be just read, but maybe in a different form, in your personal form, you can maybe send a verse, maybe you can send a different type of reminder, and maybe it can be less frequent. I want you to find that one person in your neighborhood, in your life, who you think could benefit so much with this Word of God so that we can also see this not just being our personal challenge, but this being reached out to so many people around us in this new year. Friends, it is the Word of God that transformed my life, that got me here today. And I know that's the Word of God that got all of you guys here today as well. As you go through this new year, new me, I want 2024 year to be the best year of our life. And I truly mean it. But this cannot happen without the word of God. Let us go back to the scripture. Let us devour it. Let us absorb it. And let us see what the Lord's going to do through the word of God in our lives in this 2024. Let's pray. Lord God, we are so grateful for who you are. We're so grateful for you, Lord. We are grateful that you came to this earth as a human being as we celebrated Christmas last week, Lord the humble king of kings born in a manger. And Lord, 2023 was great, but it was also tough. We had a funeral yesterday. It just seems like it just never stops at times, Lord. But we now proclaim that we need you more than ever. We need your words to parent our kids well. We need your words to be a better student. We need your words to be a better, godly, God-fearing person. Father, will you not just motivate us temp like not, not just motivate us temporarily? Father, will you challenge us to just need this word of God on our daily basis and completely trust your ultimate authority and accuracy written here on the scripture? Lord, we love you and we're so grateful that you love us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. As we close, uh, we proclaim that God has been faithful, and so he is due all of this, right? He is due our devotion every single morning, every single afternoon, whenever it might look like. Um, and so let's stand as we proclaim uh, God's faithfulness. Till I live. 
As we get ready to close, I don't know about you, but my heart is encouraged uh, to see the movement of God, but also how his word does the work. And so maybe you walked away with some personal challenges or commitments is what I'm going to call them, enter into 2024. Uh, maybe it's this greater sense of I want to know Jesus and I want to know his truth even more. And so uh, if there's anyone in the room who do not have a word of God, a Bible, your church family is going to buy you one. So you need to let me know you don't have one. We're going to get you one. And then make a commitment. Make that commitment to enjoy his word. Uh, John Piper says it best this way. How do you delight in his word? It is you pray that the Lord gives you new taste buds of the tongue of your heart. Like that, that picture of when you eat something so good, 
He gives you new taste buds on the tongue of your heart to enjoy his word. Friends, may God bless you and keep you into the new year. Let me pray, and then we are dismissed. Lord, thank you for thousands and thousands of years ago. That word has been so rich and impacted centuries and generations of people long ago. Thank you that it never changes. Thank you that it is enduring. And thank you that any circumstances we can um, encounter, your word speaks to that. May it change us. May it challenge us. May it convict us. May it grow us. Not that we become Bible heads, but it, it transforms our hearts that we walk with you. Lord, thank you for as we just sang that song, we can say all of our life, but all of this year, we look back and see your goodness and your faithfulness. Even in the moment where it feels as if rock bottom has hit. But we've endured relationship problems and financial problems and culture upheaval. You've got us through. The one thing we know is that you will be a God who never leaves us nor forsake us. And so may our trust grow, may our love for you grow all the more. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Happy New Year, friends. God bless you.